Welcome to our group's IBDC 2021 project, The Funnels at Clark Key. The overview of our presentation is as follows. Liang's Court was chosen as our site due to many amenities around, some being Fort Canning Park, Fort Canning MRT Station, Singapore River, and Clark Key. These amenities bring vibrancy to the surroundings. Wind flow was studied around the site to note the prevailing winds. Shadow analysis was done to note the shadows cast on the site. Heavy pedestrian flows from Fort Canning MRT Station and Clark Key. Hence, a thoroughfare through the mall was proposed. A lot of cyclists cycle along the Singapore River, resulting in an entrance with bicycle lots on the bottom left. Layby was proposed along the smaller routes around the site. Lastly, site entrances were proposed due to URA's requirements of a thoroughfare through the site. To preface our design, the pandemic has brought much change onto our lives, from the places we work to our concern with contact. As Singapore aims to transition into endemic living as of 10 September 2021, the Faunus provides a multitude of spaces that allow residents to feel comfortable carrying on with their daily lives outside their homes. Additionally, Mental health has been under the spotlight since the start of the pandemic, with surveys showing 31% of working from home adults claiming a decline in their mental well-being, 5% of which claimed it has worsened substantially. Post-pandemic studies have also shown that many are now turning to parks or green spaces for respite and recreation. Hence, the blending of greenery into everyday dwelling spaces would be ideal. The rainforest team implemented in the development serves as an extension of Fort Canning Park, bringing nature to the residents. The extensive greenery and cascading water features seamlessly blend into the user's experience of spaces. MET is also largely used in the commercial area. This helps to soften the outlook of the building, helping to relate it to the rainforest team, exposing them to natural elements within their immediate surroundings, helping to improve their overall well-being. Sun and wind analyses we used to optimize our building's form. The initial designs of the building form resulted in the northern facade being exposed to large amounts of sunlight. The results from the sunlight analysis substantiated a need to redesign the building, with the addition of cantilever slabs to act as sun shading devices. This significantly reduces the amount of sunlight exposure. In addition, a valley was added in the commercial zone to improve wind flow and ventilation throughout the building. The analysis results helped our architects to improve thermal comfort levels for the building's occupants. The form was also created to resemble topographic mountains and valleys, with the visually softer terracing organic slabs creating a perceived community where visual interaction is maintained. Terracing was implemented on the overall structure, allowing for a cohesive architectural language. Communal linkages and sky bridges helped direct views towards the central communal zone of the development. For 3D modeling, we started conceptually on SketchUp before transitioning to Revit. Thereafter, Rhino and Grasshopper. Additional plugins such as Weaverbird, Lunchbox, and Kangaroo were used to generate certain parametric structures. Kangaroo plugin for Grasshopper was used to design and generate canopies that provide shade for residents from harsh daylight and rain, allowing them to use the space during different weather conditions. For sustainable strategies, the building's orientation and zoning was influenced by daylight and wind analysis that was conducted with the Ladybug and Eddy 3D Grasshopper plugins. On the structural side, Tecla Structural Designer was used to simulate a typical one-bedroom residential unit, along with Nevis Works, which was used for clash detection. Visual Life was then used as an augmented reality tool to visualize a completed one-bedroom apartment. Finally, for the production stage, Lumion, Enscape, and Photoshop were used in the making of our renders. OBS, Premiere Pro, and After Effects were used for the video. The multiple functions of various communal spaces allow work and play to be integrated throughout the building. There are also openings that allow better wind circulation and light to penetrate deeper into the building. Natural spaces such as the gardening area and fitness areas are located strategically on selected levels of 6 and 10 respectively, and are chosen based on their ease of accessibility for the residents. Community garden consists of traditional outdoor gardening and indoor hydroponics which encourages residents to come together and grow their own produce. Multiple exercise equipments are placed along the sky bridge to encourage the flow of residential movement as they walk from one exercising equipment to another. 
the race platforms provides residents with a polyvalent space for them to conduct their own forms of exercise, while the seating area provided at the end of the bridges provides spaces for residents from different blocks to come together. Microspaces such as the play area and working areas are located on alternating levels throughout the building. This provides residents with the flexibility and control of the amount of interaction without limiting their use of the amenities around the building. The area accompanied with seating on the linkages allow for work and play together. Our building focuses more on one to two bedroom units due to the increase in demands over the last few years from 2010 to 2020. Home becoming the new norm, productivity and concentration levels have decreased due to various distractions. Therefore, masonette stout units were used as it allowed for segregation between work and rest. The spaces are designed such that the working areas are on the lower level while bedrooms are on the upper level. This will deter users from working in their bedroom where they have direct access to their bed, helping to create a more conducive working environment for working adults. For our commercial design, a valley access a thoroughfare through the building connecting the adjacent Fort Canning MRT to Clark Key. To pay homage to the hawkers that once occupied the banks of the Singapore River, push carts were set up along the valley to sell food fare for residents and visitors alike. Double glazed full height glass facades allows for maximum daylighting to reach deep within the internal spaces, reducing the dependency for artificial lighting. Additionally, ramps were used as the main pedestrian circulation between the commercial levels where both features improve the visual awareness for shoppers. Three main anchor destination nodes were created to attract people. Voids were sometimes placed at these nodes to improve natural ventilation and keep the space cool. A large canopy shelters the valley from harsh weather conditions. From design to the construction of the building, sustainable and economic design was our main goal. The whole building spots many green walls, trees and community gardens that provide shade and create ambience for the users. In terms of construction, PPVCs and other precast components are used throughout the residential portion of the development, such as hollow core precast slabs and structural trusses. MET, specifically glue lamb and cross lamb timbers, are used almost entirely in the construction of the commercial portion, lowering the building's carbon footprint. On top of all of this, several additional systems will be installed. These include BIPV modules, which was strategically placed according to daylight and incident radiation analysis we conducted on Grasshopper. Pedestrian simulation software was used as a demand forecasting model to predict lanes of high traffic. Power generating floor tiles will then be implemented on lanes of high traffic. It was found that these tiles were able to generate up to 1.28 kilowatts on average for every floor. An urban water harvesting system that collects rainwater will be used to irrigate the building's greenery. Six elevator energy regeneration systems and a centralized cooling system to service the entire development. Finally, all these systems will be monitored and overseen by a smart FM network using Internet of Things. Users can also monitor their resource usages via a mobile application and make complaints if there are issues or defects in the building. Facility managers will then act upon these requests. To improve productivity for on-site construction, the building will adopt a DFMA approach for construction of the building. The residential section of the building is constructed with a series of 28 unique PPVC module types, combinations of which will make up the 1, 2, and 4 bedroom units, while the commercial sections will spot the use of MET, such as glue laminated timber and cross laminated timber. However, due to the unique design of the building's form, construction planning also posed a huge challenge for this project. When trying to design the bedroom units in accordance with PPVC construction, a major flaw was discovered when Nevis work class detection was carried out. The PPVC residential units contained stairs that would clash into a major structural beam within the PPVC units. The civil engineers had to come out with a solution to solve the problem. We concluded that a redesign of the PPVC frames was needed. Thus, the double volume PPVC units now feature a circular steel frame that allows for stairway access while still providing a path for lateral load transfer from within the steel frames to the building superstructure. Additionally, we also face a challenge of having to support the large cantilevered sections of the different floor slabs. Modular triangular support structures or TSS were designed to transfer slab loadings to the PPVC steel frames and finally 
to the substructure. The TSS will be manufactured off-site and installed on-site once the PPVC modules are installed. The TSS was designed with horizontal lengths of 3, 4, 5 and 5.5 meters to accommodate various slab lengths. With the aid of Grasshopper plug-in Kangaroo, we were able to generate a set of two bridge structural supports for both the upper and lower sky bridges with simple changes in the code to achieve a quick design that fits the parameters inserted. With DFMA, prefabricated components allow for the manufacturing and construction of components to be carried out concurrently on and off-site. Furthermore, DFMA shortens assembly time by utilizing standardized assembly methods. This significantly reduces the overall construction time and manpower on site by up to 40%. Lastly, a gun chart was produced to ensure that the different processes would be clearly defined on a timeline. Under construction planning, the engineers decided that the JIT concept will be utilized. Four tower cranes will be installed in site for the whole construction process, each capable of carrying up to 20 tons. Cranes 1 and 3 will be used to construct blocks B1 and B2, respectively, while tower cranes 2 and 4 will be used to construct block A. The crane positions are such that no double handling of PVVC and MET components will occur, significantly reducing the construction time. A comprehensive traffic management plan was also created to clearly specify the delivery periods and traffic routes on and off-site, for delivery drivers to ensure as little time and little manpower will be required for each delivery of PPVC and MET components. For teamwork, Figma and Myra were used for research and ideation, and we held discussions through Zoom and MS Teams. Excel was used for administrative planning, such as timelines and work delegation. For project quality and learning outcomes, we faced numerous issues throughout the project and had to find solutions for them. This includes the restrictive timeline that coincided with the team's school and internship schedules. Through the entire experience, we have grown resilient and sharp to adapt to the ever-present changes in design. As a whole, the team was satisfied with the building's outcome as it was a great experience that exposed us to new standards and skills.